Now let's talk about how to graph trig functions. This is just the very basic trig function. I want to show you where you can, how you can use your unit circle. There's my unit circle to graph uh, the sine and the cosine function. So let's just start with the sine of x. So f of x equals the sine of x. I'm going to show you how you can use your your unit circle to quickly and easily graph it. So I, hi, whoops, I said sine. I wanted to say cosine. Because notice that I've highlighted on the unit circle all of the cosine values. So for zero degrees, the cosine is one. So this is x is in degrees, and f of x is up here. So that's the cosine. So what's the cosine of zero degrees? is 1 so that's up here when when 0 degrees the cosine of 0 degrees is 1 so 0 degrees just say 1 okay and we can do that I'm skipping I'm skipping 30 degrees notice what I'm doing and I, I actually wrote this in radians so let me even change this to radians you could do it in radians or degrees, but notice how I put my intervals in radians. Could easily cut, change those degrees, but actually radians are a little bit easier to work with because if you'll notice how I set my intervals up, there's 2 pi radians, half of that is 1 pi, half of 1 pi is half of a pi, etc. It's just almost easier <coughs> to do it if you understand how fractions work and how that, how that happens. So, let's go ahead and start plotting these points on here. At pi over 2, the sine, or the cosine, is 0. So there's that point. At pi, which is right here, it's negative 1. <coughs> God bless you. At 3 pi over 2, which is down there, it's back to 0 again. And at 2 pi, it's back up to 1. So you'll see and let's even plot these other intermediate points. Let's plot, let's plot the ones in between. Where's root 2 over 2? Root 2 over 2 is bigger than 1 half. It's a little bit bigger than 1 half. Okay. So that's going to be right here. This is going to be pi over 4 because it's halfway to 0 from pi over 2. You know, it's halfway. So that's going to be, here's 1 half right here. That's going to be a little bit bigger than 1 half. This one right here, root 3 over 2, is even bigger than that. It's going to be like up here. And notice that that's not halfway between here. Third, th pi over 6 is like right here. It's close, a little bit closer to pi over 4 than it is to 0. So it's not halfway in between. Same with root, uh, I'm sorry, 60 degrees. Pi over 3 is like right here. It's, pretty cl it's a little bit bigger than pi over 4, pi over 3. And notice that that's a little bit lower than it's still... Wait, where is it at? No, that, that is 1 half. Sorry, that is one half. So that's right there. See how it's it's mm -hmm. one half is right there. So what I do when I graph these, as you'll see, is I'll get a smooth shape that looks like this. But it doesn't stop there. That's the that's called one period mm -hmm. of that graph. But then you'll notice that it's a unit circle. It just keeps going. So if I keep going, I'm going to keep going every you'll notice that every pi over 2 I go to either 0 or down or up to negative 1 and so what happens is you're going to see that your graph keeps following the same there's another period of the same graph and it will keep doing that on the left side as well it's going to go down negative pi over 2 if I look at my graph that's going this way and so here's negative pi over 2 over here, and it's still negative 1. So I'm going this way, and it's going to go down. If that's I keep negative going. Pi. Sorry, that's negative pi. Negative pi <coughs> is, negative, is negative 1, right? So it's right here. Negative pi over 2 is right here, which was 0. So that was that point right there that I put down before. And then it would go up to here, and it would go all the way up to here. So you're going to have this. That that's the peak of your graph, and that's the bottom of your graph. 
and you're going to learn how to graph in general using this, uh, this same process. Let's take a look at the sine graph real quick. Now let's look at the sine, let's do this in green, or in blue rather. So you'll notice, here's the sine of zero, which is zero, so it starts right there. Here's the sine of, of pi over two is one, so it goes up right there. The sine of pi is zero, so it's back down here to the middle. The sine of three pi over two, sorry, is that one right there, is negative one. So it goes down there, and the sine of pi, of two pi, that's two pi as well as zero, is back to zero. So this one looks very similar. In fact, I'm going to blow your mind with a little explanation. It looks just like the cosine graph, except it's what? Skinnier. It's shifted over how much? Pi over two. 90 degrees. It's shifted over pi over two two or <clears throat> 90 degrees. That's what it's done. It's shifted. And what do 90 degrees 90 degrees is complementary. complementary. That's where you get cosine and sine from because they're complementary angles. It's crazy. If you add um well, anyway, I won't get into it any more than that, but that's where the cosine comes from. People always ask, why, is the cos why isn't the cosine 1 over sine? It's because those aren't reciprocal angles, they're co-angles. The cosine and the sine are co-angles, they're, they're phases of each other 90 degrees off. That's why. But of course, this will keep doing the same thing. This will be going up here, down here, down here and up to here so your your graph is going to keep going it's going to keep going but it's again going to be off by 90 degrees all the time so your sine and your cosine graphs look the same because they are complementary functions of each other they're co-functions of each other yeah but don't they look different when it's like just one period